You, my friend, are a hero. One of eleven, in fact. But you're also a cube. And that means you've had to develop a different way to get around quickly. So, you tumble. And since you are a hero, you've developed different skills for each side of your body, like slide, dash, tumble, and jump. Hey everyone, how you doing? It is Tuesday, September the 20th, 2022, and we are in, we have 10 days remaining on the campaign. We are now at $229,378 Canadian uh, as we speak, and 1,313 backers. It's kind of a bad luck number. Double 13, maybe it counts, uh, crosses each other out. Anyway, um, it's good to be back with a video update. I uh, had a busy weekend uh, working on some animation stuff. I will share that, sort of the progress of that as part of this update. Uh, in fact, you may have already seen it. I, I think I'm going to tack it on the front here. Um, I'm hoping to have that in the next few days, uh, just as part of, you know, the, the wind down on the campaign for those people who come, you know, remind me, you know, when they come back at the end of the campaign, if they haven't backed yet, uh, maybe it'll give them a slightly better idea of what the game is about than the current project video. But I'm also working on some other things. Uh, you also will note that yesterday I posted an update talking about the um, the add-on, the new add-on uh, that I added yesterday, the uh, first edition modular game board add-on. It's basically these double-sided game boards. These are you know, nice, heavy cardboard. I've shown them before, um, bought UV uh, on, on the surface. We're actually going to do this on the maps as well, um, the fold-out maps for second edition. Uh, but anyway, just wanted to show you that that is these nine double-sided boards. I think I've only got a, a shy a few here. I've got uh, three, six, seven. I've got, but uh, it also comes with these four um, double-sided start zones because the, the thing with these uh, boards is they only have four respawn points on each board uh, and they're on the edges. The reason for that is because boards rotate and because this is supposed to be a modular system. So in order to, to use these, at least uh, on their own, you need some place to start. Um, so typically you stick one of these on the side of the board and then, you know, add on to them as you see fit. So yeah, that's good. as an add-on now on the campaign, uh, the price is 25 US dollars pain. So what that also means is you can now, if you buy the Fringe Underground expansion from uh, wondermintgames.com, uh, you can now use it because it requires, uh, you know, start zones from the first edition game, along with, uh, I think one or two of the scenarios also uses one of the other big boards because one of the things that's Part of uh, the Fringe Underground are passage tokens, which let you lead from below ground above and below. So you can connect boards that are physically separated. Um, so that's a neat little aspect of Fringe Underground. There's elements of that that are actually in second edition where you can get from parts of the board that aren't otherwise connected, um, but they're not part of second edition as a token um, because they don't need to be. Yeah, so that's that add-on. And I hope if you're interested in that stuff, especially if you're interested in sort of creating your own scenarios, bigger, kind of more expansive maps and, and board rotation. So what's not on that list, actually, that comes with this, this add-on, but that will be part of it because uh, it'll be important, is Quake Rune. So there's a card in first edition that lets you rotate game boards. There are a few cards in second edition that, that have that. Omni Rune has that option, but in most second edition scenarios, it doesn't apply. But I'll include, uh, I think, four copies of the Quake Rune card with updated uh, card frame with second edition icons and stuff in that as well, so that you can add them into your exploration deck so that you can rotate boards. Um, so that will be part of it as well. I'll uh, update that graphic uh, as soon as I can on the add-on to show that that's included, because half the fun of using modular boards is the fact that you can rotate boards. So one of the other things I wanted to talk about, and I, I have covered it briefly in uh, previous updates where I talk about the differences between first and second edition, but one of the things I wanted to highlight as I was going through some of the cards 
in second edition to talk about you know different topics and uh, like I don't think I really covered on the change like this the significance of the changes to all of the cards in the game including um the the pet deck there are now six brand new pets uh in second edition which add significant variety uh to the kinds of effects you can do and these are are fun and four uh new or modified item cards as well so basically most of the cards in the game have had some alterations to not most a, a significant number of cards have had alterations to text um a lot of that has to do with moving away from pure icons like in this case this is a card that still has an icon because it places a token right so there's a picture of the the token but most of the other cards uh, are are text only now uh so you don't need icons what that does is it makes sure that the rules for that card are very clear we always had text in addition to icons, but it left us very little room. So we've moved toward text for clarification. Here's an example of a card that had some text clarifications on it. Uh, this is Crusher that lets you break walls as you move. You may break through walls or destroy tokens as you move over them. And then in brackets, uh, remove the wall or token before moving on to it. So that clarifies rules that were part of the FAQ last time where people are like, well, can I step on the token first, use it, and then break it? So no, the answer is like, I mean, you're smashing as you go, right? Uh, that's the idea of the card. Uh, so you remove the token or wall before you uh, would move on to that space. So that those kinds of things have happened across the board. Clarification on, on text of cards. But again, like there's a whole bunch of brand new uh, items and pet cards that are going to add some variety to the kinds of things you can do in the game. Um, and because we've brought items and pets into like at the start of the game, you're going to get one of each. Like it's become kind of a really fun sort of meta sub game uh, at the start of, of your turn of, of the game. So you can go, well, I combine these two and it gives me another strategy, right? And so we, we also needed to have an equal number of items and pets. And I think the numbers were a slightly different last time, but in first edition, it didn't really matter because you're drawing those from the, the main exploration deck. I'll, one fun thing to try, if you own first edition already, or if you're going to buy it as part of, you know, waiting for this, which I recommend, actually. I mean, if if you want to play Quad Heroes now, first edition is still a fantastic game. Um, and it, it's a slightly different kind of experience, right? Because of the nature of the game boards and the way the upgrade system works, all of that. But if you if you do, you you could try adjusting your, your first edition game uh, by pulling the items and pets out of the deck and separating them. The difficulty is they had the same card back, so it makes it challenging. And play with the second edition item and pet rules. Um, you'll have to kind of assign your own value to them or just don't. Uh, so we have numbers on the bottom of the cards uh, to indicate sort of a power level, right? So you can spend five points between the two um, just so that you don't end up with a super overpowered combination um, and it makes it unfair, right? So you can judge that yourself if you want to play with your first edition and take the items and pets out and then people are dealt the way it works is you deal three items three pets to each player and then you choose one of each uh, at the start of the game but you'll probably have to assign some some kind of a value to those uh if you have them in sleeves it's an easy thing to do you just you know write some numbers one to five based on your assumption of the power level of those and just slide them into the sleeve uh so that way you know you can make that assessment uh, just a fun way to sort of tweak first edition to sort of bring it in line with some of the ideas from from second edition. So that's items and pets, but also part of the exploration deck is here is the size of the second edition exploration deck. I believe it's 72 cards. These are all brand new cards. Um, so the reason that uh, there are so many new cards in second edition is one once we took the items and pets out of the exploration deck, uh, we realized that we needed more variety in there. Um, and we did different kinds of effects that sort of mimic things that can happen with items and pets, but as a one shot. Um, so they're not, these aren't all overlapping. Many of these abilities are, are, are cards do things that are new that, that aren't done with items and pets, but some are like one shot effects that we've seen in other cards. But there are 21, I think 21 or 22 brand new cards. Some of them are two ofs. And some of them are single, tends to be the, the more powerful ones. There's only one of in the deck. So on top of uh, items, pets, and uh, 
the general exploration cards, something that's brand new in second edition are the secret cards. Um, and I, I've briefly talked about this in previous updates where I discussed the differences, but I think that the secret deck is, is a super fun aspect that came out of trying to figure out how to reduce the number of tokens in first edition because first edition has tons of tokens and and makes like lots of possibilities in terms of uh scenario construction in this sort of sandboxy way but because i, I used everything as tokens so those secret tokens if you're not familiar basically most scenarios or all scenarios will have these secret tokens spread around the board and the scenario will, will say choose these secret tokens shuffle them and place them in these places on the board so you don't know which secret shows up where that kind of thing by going to secret tokens that just have a secret on one side and then on, on the back side there, there are numbers which are used in the solo uh content it doesn't matter where you place them setup is faster and we have a deck of cards i'm not exactly sure the exact number in here but these mostly include uh, text-based effects, and they tend to be positive. There are a couple that are a little bit surprising, like uh, Pit Trap, for example, which you flip it over, uh, or you read the card, and basically you pits appear uh, around your hero, so you could end up trapping yourself. There's a similar one that does that with walls. Uh, but otherwise, for the most part of the 30 or so cards that are in this deck, uh, might be more... Um, they tend to be quite fun and positive and oftentimes are kind of the Hail Mary play that you need. Uh, it just, in my my thinking uh, about this is it, they generally add lots of fun. Uh, whenever a secret is played, something really neat is going to happen uh, and often can save your bacon. I, I can't think of the number of times where I've been playing a game on, on Tabletop Simulator where it's kind of a Hail Mary play. I have a card that there there is a, a pet card or an item, I can't remember which, that when you discard two regular cards, you can draw a card from the secret deck. Or I've done that or activated my queue to get a secret or stepped on a secret token where it's basically, you know, changed the game for me. And uh, usually it results in a laugh out loud moment. Uh, and even if it doesn't, it, it's fun, right? So <laughs> one of my objectives with, with, this game and probably all of the games that I, you know, have have in the works is I love the element of surprise, right? I mean, the Wonderment Games, the name of the company is really based on this idea I've had since I was very young, which is I, I, I was fascinated when I was a kid by just laying out in the park. And that's really the logo. Like I remember on a summer day, nothing to do. I'm like eight, nine, 10 years old. And I'm with my friends on our backs in the grass in the park, looking up at the clouds and, and, you know, just being amazed by this mysterious world we live in. And why do the clouds make these pictures and just the, the mysteries of the human imagination and mind, right? So I love the idea of, of surprises and, you know, fun things coming out of nowhere. And, and that's like, th those ideas are kind of jammed in, into quad heroes. And, that's probably the thing I'm most proud of about this game is, is the emergent nature of the gameplay that you, uh, there's always going to be something interesting and fun you can do if you use your imagination. And uh, if you especially dig into the cards and you play the cards. So this, this update is really a love letter to the cards in Quad Heroes. And if you do play on Tabletop Simulator and when you get your game, or if you, you know, you're playing your first edition Quad Heroes, don't just, especially in first edition, when you're choosing your upgrades, make sure you choose some upgrades that give you cards because that's really where the fun part of the gameplay is. So a lot of people I've noticed in my demos, I mean, 95% of the people that I teach this game to end up loving it. Uh, maybe not 95%, but maybe 80%. Um, but the ones who have the most fun are the ones who gravitate to the least obvious answer. I mean, this is a game about movement for sure. But making sure that you that you're drawing cards is uh, <laughs> will make sure that you're having way more fun uh, with the game. So that's that's about all I've got for now. Uh, there will be a live stream tonight. Yesterday's update, uh, the text update, I said it was last night. Tonight I will be, and I believe Danny's going to be joining me. We'll be on a Twitch stream 
link is in yesterday's update. I'll link it again today with a great streamer who played with us on last Friday night's uh, live stream that that I did of the sheep soccer thing, which you should watch if you get a chance or any of the other live streams you can find on the Wonderment Games YouTube channel, which I'll also link as well. Yeah, so that'll be fun. We'll be playing, uh, I think, a four player game tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern. I also saw somebody was looking for, for those in, in the EU or like basically other time zones outside of North America, they want me to do some streams at different times of the day and i definitely intend to do that this early this week anyway is going to be tricky because i'm trying to finish this revised video which i hope is i hope is worth the effort the way that i look at it it's kind of what i should have done in, in the first place but just time right like i i can only do so many things at a time as a as a one person shop one you know eventually uh with some additional success on on Kickstarter and in, in retail with with this game and with subsequent games, hopefully one day this is my only like my full time gig. But currently I'm also I I also have a day job essentially. I, I uh, consult and uh, do graphic design and uh, animation that kind of thing for the board game industry uh, as a contractor, uh, freelancer essentially. Um, so anyway, like I split my time between those things. I mean, during this campaign, basically, I'm I'm almost exclusively doing, you know, this. But um, anyway, uh, this video, the new uh, Kickstarter video will, I hope, at least be something that when people come back to this page, even if it's after the campaign, when the late pledges are up, that kind of thing, um, it, it'll sort of do a better job of saying what this game is all about and uh, hopefully it's worthwhile. So I'm expecting that to be done uh, today or tomorrow. Uh, I hoped it would be done yesterday, but uh, uh, anyway, it, it's not, but you'll see just a little piece of it at the front here. And I, I hope you give me some feedback on that. I know the animation is not perfect. I'm, I'm kind of doing this as quickly as I can uh, and, and also having it be fun. Uh, so, you know, this isn't Pixar quality stuff. Um, it's not my absolute best work, but I think it's fun and I think you guys will enjoy it, especially once once it's done and the the sound and uh, music, sound effects and music are in there. Uh, anyway, I'll sign off for now. Uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. So people are still asking about VAT. Uh, I have a meeting tomorrow morning with a potential new partner. So chatting with uh, some, every time I think I'm done the video, I'm not. Um, I was chatting with uh, a friend uh, here in Canada, uh, Connor, who runs Inside Up Games, and asking him some questions about how they handle VAT uh, on their projects. And I didn't really get a super clear answer, but it varies project to project with them. And I asked them who is handling their fulfillment and, and all of that. And um, so he's connected me with, with what he says is a great partner uh, for European fulfillment. And uh, so I'm, I'm considering shifting up my my fulfillment plan just because a cost and to see where things go right. My objective with fulfillment is obviously a, a reliable partner who gets the packages shipped out uh, in a timely manner and uh, in good condition, so well packaged, but also makes the cost as easy as uh, as low as possible for you guys. And QML was great with, I was, you know, very happy with them on the last campaign and continue to be happy with, you know, how they helped me with uh, fulfilling my Shopify orders, that kind of thing. Um, but they're not the cheapest in the business uh, and cheap isn't necessarily the best. Uh, however, um, it's essentially just markup on, you know, shipping rates. Um, so, you know, this campaign is not going to hit a million dollars. So, you know, budgets are a little uh, tighter uh, across the board and that includes freight and all of those things that are sort of part of the reason why games cost what they do. Um, so anyway, I'm looking into potentially, you know, working with other fulfillment partners, which will only be a good thing for you guys. So it's not something you need to be concerned about, but the meeting tomorrow, I will have a much better idea after that meeting, uh, which happens in the early afternoon, my time uh, tomorrow, what is going on with the VAT for Europe. I still am leaning toward covering that import VAT um, 
for you guys, but I need to know what exactly what that number is, because if it's uh, 30% of the entire shipment into Europe, uh, it's non, it doesn't work for me uh, cost wise. Like my margins aren't that high on this, this project. Uh, it's a $139 US game, but uh, it's, to all of that, right? I mean, you're, you've got all these painted components. It's an expensive product. So, uh, I can't afford to lose money on this, this project. So, but my objective here is to, to make sure that I get you these games without, you know, uh, additional costs. So I will have a, uh, a solid answer on that for you guys. Uh, if not tomorrow afternoon, it'll probably take me a little time to, to digest and, and calculate the numbers, uh, then for sure before the end of this week, uh, so if you're kind of waiting on that answer, it's coming. The other thing I wanted to address here, uh, which I don't have a definitive answer for still, uh, it, and that is the German language edition. Um, and of all of the different language stuff uh, that's out there that we intend to produce, which is all of the, the sort of major, like French, Spanish, German, English, those are the kind of big four, I suppose, uh, in the Kickstarter board game world. Um, like I really want to make sure that those happen, but German for sure uh, needs to happen. I just don't have a specific partner yet. Uh, I, I can't discuss the specifics really, but we're working with some people uh, to help us make those connections and and make sure the game gets out there uh, in as many languages as possible. And I will, you know, just rest assured that German is coming. Uh, and. I would like you to be able to purchase Ger the German edition through me. Um, and I, I, one way or another, I'm going to make that happen. Um, so uh, essentially, I'm committing at this point to that you guys will be able to choose the German edition during the uh, pledge manager. So don't be afraid if you're in Germany and you want the German edition of the game and not just English, don't be afraid to pledge on this campaign. Uh, we want your support and we're going to make sure you get that that game uh, and it will be produced at the same time. You we don't have a specific partner, uh, like we don't have a deal yet with a specific partner, but um, one way or another that's gonna happen even if I have to do it entirely myself. Uh, so please, if you're in Germany, don't hesitate to to support the project. We love you guys. Um, uh, the, you know, the, because the Spiel Schmiede people last time did a fantastic job and um, yeah, we want to make sure that you guys can can upgrade your first edition game or or jump into second edition uh, with a full German language edition. And that is also true of French and Spanish and probably Italian and Polish and all kinds of other languages. But most of the most of those other languages, uh, you'll probably have to buy through either another campaign or through another publisher. But I again, I don't know. I don't have the answers for that. I would love to be able to say you can get your game through me, but. Uh, I, I don't have the answers yet, and, but I, I will over the next uh, couple of months, particularly for sure before the end of the pledge manager going offline. But um, yeah, so I will wrap this update up for, for real this time uh, and get back to work on that uh, other stuff I need to do. And I'll see you guys tonight. If you join that Twitch stream, that'll be fun. And I will post a stream for tomorrow. I'm going to talk to Danny. Uh, let's not say tomorrow um, because people want a little more uh, time in advance. So tomorrow's Wednesday. Let's go with a Thursday daytime. Um, maybe I'll do it at lunch uh, my time, which will be early evening uh, in Europe, I believe. Uh, anyway, sometime in the afternoon for me, which makes it evening for you guys a little easier to consume. And uh, we'll get some streams going and uh, look right out the rest of this campaign on a high. And I, I'm going to basically, once this uh, animation is done, which sort of keeps me occupied uh, and the, and the other few upgrades to the page, once those are done, basically I'm full-time engagement in terms of uh, I'll, I'll probably be streaming all day long. Uh, <laughs> if you're not sick of me yet, you will be uh, by the end of the next 10 days. So signing off for real now, you guys have a fantastic rest of your Tuesday. I know there are probably a bunch of new campaigns out there uh, popping up on Kickstarter since it is Tuesday. So, you know, enjoy browsing those. Let me know in the comments, you know, which projects that you're curious about and interested in. And uh, 
I the last time I ran the Kickstarter for first edition, I backed a whole bunch of games while uh, running that campaign. Uh, I don't think I'm going to do that, do that this time, um, but I, I might check out a, f a few at least. Um, I, like I have so little time to actually play uh, other games these days, but I need to go through my backlog of probably 60 or 70 games that I haven't played that are in my collection and finally get them to the table. So bye, guys. See you tomorrow.